control people. The law does have no compassion. Even the Ten Commandments they had no you remember that when they first started off you, you died violating the law. It had no mercy in it. You, you did it or you didn't. If you failed to do the law or you complied to the law, what happened? Dude, you, stone. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you were penalized. <laughs> but you know, that's what's being done even to this day. Exactly. People think that it takes the law to make you act or live as a Christian. <laughs> and they think that grace mm. is an wow. is the 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 power to sin yeah. as a Christian. Yeah. But grace uh, is love. love. Come on now. And if you love God, then your nature just changes automatically. Exactly. Don't you want your father to be proud of you? Come on, brother. Come on. I mean, it just blows my mind that they think that you got to have laws and rules well, I th to I think stay safe. When you say uh, an unsafe person would need that because they don't have law. I mean, they don't have that yeah. element in them that keeps them from sinning. They don't have anything in them. All they know is the law. law is for. But the law when, is for those who are unsaved. Legit. But yeah. a saved, not only are we to, we are to manifest it. We are to manifest the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the patience, the meekness, the forgiveness, the everything that God, that Jesus is, is what we're supposed to be. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to love our enemies. We're supposed to turn the other cheek. We're supposed to bless them that curse us and pray for them that despite the use us and persecute us. That's our part. Yeah. And we're to encourage people to do the same. Yeah. Where does our comfort come in when we are being persecuted and when we're being maltreated? Yeah. The question, and that is a very good question because we do address that issue. Yeah. We keep saying y'all need to stop doing this to us. Why? Uh, hey, why are we saying that? And why are we even asking them to do that when we know they can't do it, and it's only said, it's only the law that's keeping them. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If I slap you on the one cheek, why should we, we tell them not to? We, we've gotten away from uh, <laughs> looking up to our, our uh, spiritual elders, those who are mature in Christ, because only someone who is mature can actually consistently demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. Elders. And in doing so, there shall be signs following. So they're, they're, these these young kids don't have any examples nice. to actually look at and see the results. But see, you know, there, there's far and few and in between. So to have somebody sit there and love their enemy, right? And then there be a uh, a, a change of, that takes place. We just had a great man die yeah. that had demonstrated that. Yeah. We just, we just, we had a going home celebration the for one. a man who walked in that, who, for, who was, who was demonstrating that, who was a, a, a seasoned Christian. So it's hard to live that way and be in, in government. So that man was definitely seasoned. And, 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 the, and of course, the prototype of our kind, the Lord Jesus himself gave us the example and also empowered us by his spirit to live that example. Um, when you talk about the flesh, I mean, one of the things that I find out is that when we are concerned about the flesh or we can't crucify this flesh, then we will not be able to live that lifestyle at some point. Um, are we willing? Are we willent to give it up all just to represent the Lord Jesus Christ? Am I willing to hang on that cross? Am I willing to let somebody kill me or beat me or mistreat me and bless them, just you know, to, to represent the kingdom? And 
I'll be honest with you, brothers. As foul as that might seem, I think it's the call. Well, you know, I want to. Uh, I believe I mean, that there's, Jesus there's... is calling us to address injustice, but to retaliate against it or to live any other way other than Christ. And if there is a retaliation, and if there is a correction, that it be left into the hands of God when it comes to us. You see what I'm saying? When you're put in that position, I do believe that that shall take place. I, I just believe it. Um, I just think the spirit will drive you to endure and to succeed in that. Uh, and to be a true representation of God, to be a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. And it's, it's, you have to search that to be in that, I think, yeah. in this point. But if you're put in, in that position, I do believe when, when there's a choice for you to sell out or you to just go forth, I, I, I think that, that, most Christians will actually demonstrate the power and authority of God, even if it's unto physical death. And um, I think there'll be a peace about it as well. Well, I think so too. I want to go to that book. I want to look at um, the, you, when you refer to the elders, that book, that stamp book I'm talking about, stamp from the beginning, meaning put you, that's the book I'm referring to that I'm going to try to address. The, the church was the one that was endorsing the wrong behavior. Mm -hmm. And it was giving it to the people so it justified their behavior. Right. Or a group, you know, group of people. Yeah. It was clear that it was being misused. And I'm saying is it's been, I'm I'm going all the way back to twelve hundred it probably further than that, but we know the atrocities that happened with the Spanish Inquisition. And, and and we know about Germany and World War II. They they the, the Third Reich. That, that, that was talking about that was that wasn't they they were they were uh evolutionists. Yeah. <laughs> they were evolution they, they they the gospel did not exist to them. Yeah, and, but they tried and, to be so, right? They they tried to pardon. Them. Then they try to use the church as the they But they did God. use the church. Huh? But but they used the church to justify it. Yeah. But they didn't believe in it. They I, didn't believe they don't they didn't believe in God, but they used God to justify their actions. And they to, the, to the masses. Yeah, they did to that for faith. But you know, uh Pastor, it's still being done today. It's still, yes, sir. That's it's still what, being done today, right in the church. Come on, brother. And, 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 and what I'm hoping to do is saying that guys uh, affect that change to talk to the church. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. If, we, we, if we talk to the church and we talk to one another and, and encourage one another, aid and study to show yourself approved, right? Unto God. What does the word say? You don't need, what Alan, we said a couple of weeks ago, but the scripture says that we need to get a point and allow the Holy Spirit to be able to teach us. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. In yeah. other words, we, 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 we come together in fellowship, but we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit who's given us a revelation and the understanding of the word. Hey, um, so much is being said that I'm going to probably lose it, but I'm just going to go on what you're talking about right now. Hopefully make my way back to something that Brother Addison said. Um, one of the things that we have, uh, you know, we got all this leadership and as you say, the church, the institutions and the representatives of those institutions are doing this. What we as members of these institutions, okay, you know, our home churches, you know, we need to give some feedback to yeah. those who are in those pulpits, yeah. to those deacons and deaconess, and we need to let them know. And but as opposed to just sitting there uh -huh. and and taking it, and because for some, okay, if it's uh, some people go to those places because it's a matter of convenience, and I don't have another place to go. Woo. Some some, if you have means of travel, you know, you just find another church. Wow. Doesn't necessarily mean that that other church 
is, is, is preaching the relationship with Jesus Christ, it just means, okay, I can tolerate this style. And so that, that's one of the things that I'm just throwing it out there that just hit me when you said that. But I want to go to something that Brother Addison was saying earlier, and it's, it was probably about five or ten minutes past, so we may have kind of missed it. But he, he was hitting on something, and he talked about, the, you know, the fruits of the flesh. Yeah. That we preach works in the flesh. Opposed to the fruits. Right, right. And um, you know what? And help me out here, Brother Addison, because uh, you, you often go back into the um, Old Testament when you mention something to talk about something now. In the... In, Genesis, when it talks about how Satan uh, used his cunning to deceive Eve and to deceive Adam, uh, something that kind of hit me is is that what he did is he went upon the fruits of perhaps the flesh, even though they didn't know that then, as opposed to what you had said earlier, and that is, an elder said it as well, and that is is the relationship with the Father. See, he didn't he didn't he didn't talk about that. What he talked about is, hey, what you can get out of this. And yeah. so I'm saying all that to say, because we know these fruits really are manifestations as to who we're following. Amen. So if we, again, speak on the relationship that we need to have with the Lord Jesus Christ, the relationship that we need to have with him, those other things will come. Amen. And uh, and that just kind of hit me because... Again, you, you, you also said context, context, context. That's what happens. A lot of times there's so much that the, the mystery that God is, is trying to explain to us that we, unless we let the spirit give us the revelation, we're going to miss the point. Amen. So, so Satan took the whole thing away from, hey, I ain't talking about your relationship with God the Father. I'm talking about what you can get from this tree. You, you're going to know what he knows. I ain't talking about that relationship. Wow. Likewise with us, yeah, we keep talking about the fruits of the flesh, which appeals to our flesh. No, we need to talk about that relationship with Jesus. Likewise in the church, likewise with some of the people that I'm running into. Wow. They're talking about what they're mad at. You know what? I, I realize now, I'm not even going to worry about that because that's all from the flesh. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to say, hey, what's your relationship with Jesus? Hey. Now you're Let's preaching, man. Now because you're preaching. from there, they're going to get it. Yeah, God you know that, to him and, in the spirit. You know what? Amen. I, to break to bring the content, you that's a profound thing you said. Yes. Because I agree. It, 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 it is about relationship. Mm -hmm. Even coming back to when you when you when you walk away from God, you fall away from God, you want to restore that relationship. You want to come back to establish that relationship. If you did wrong, like Elder said, you know, if you if you hide in the back of the booth in the corner of the dark, you need to be able to repent and come back to God for that relationship. And mm -hmm. what I wanted to show though is that there was an attack against the relationship in Genesis chapter three. And I want you to see it and you tell me this this is an attack against the relationship. Let me show you the, uh, the scripture. This is Genesis chapter three. Mm -hmm. And you watch, you tell me if there's not a tact against the relationship in that. It started in, uh, I guess you can go with number, start with verse three and move from there. Okay. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Yeah, and then it's back against relationship, I mean, right there. Uh-huh. I mean, remember, like, this is an example, like, if your parent told you, you boy, you better stay in the yard. Uh-huh. Brother Addison, he got a younger one, so he's the most close to do that. When you, when, when somebody comes into your yard or your house, and you told your child, this is how I want you to behave, this is the thing I want you to do, and if somebody has the audacity to come in, and say, you don't need to do that. Uh -huh. Your dad, your dad, your father, he he's all faced. What is happening when that happens? There is an attack on the relationship between the father and the son. Yeah. Man, uh -huh. When the devil Goodness. said, you shall surely not die. Right. 
That was right. the fact now, of the relationship. Yeah. And you're exactly right. Amen. And that's kind of what I'm saying. Let's go back. I'm, I'm looking at it now, right? So it says, you're, it, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent, now this is where the serpent, in his cunning, cunning ways, kind of, kind of shifts the focus. It says here, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Right there is what I'm pointing at. And that's what Brother Addison got me thinking. Okay, what he did is he took the focus off of the relationship with yes, God sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. and put it on actions. Yes, sir.